thousand years have passed since the disappearance of the dinosaurs. This is the time for the development of smaller animals, including small mammals, which gradually grew in number and species until they became the predominant group of animals during the Miocene epoch, diversifying greatly thanks to climatic changes. The planet Earth continues to change its appearance as the continents continue to drift towards their current positions, in this period Africa, the Arabian Peninsula and India continue to move northwestward. As time passes, first, there was a global cooling that reduced the atmosphere's ability to absorb moisture, the climatic consequence of which was increasing aridity. The planet Earth gradually undergoes a generalized temperature increase of up to current temperatures, a phenomenon known as the Miocene Climatic Optimum. Africa fractures in two, leaving the continent's fauna isolated. Among many other animals, monkeys suffer the consequences of the natural catastrophe. The Great Rift Fault begins to form, in the western part of this fault emerges a mountain range of hundreds of kilometers that prevents the passage of the humid currents of the Indian Ocean, so that the rains will not reach the interior of the continent. The Upper Miocene period caused the decline of tropical rainforests throughout the region, which also led to a significant decrease in forests, as rainfall became increasingly scarce. These new climatological and orographic conditions will significantly affect the ecosystems and therefore life on the western side, where the animal fauna of this area is, di is divided in two, those that inhabit the savanna and those that inhabit the forest, with completely different conditions and adaptability strategies. Those living in the savanna suffer the loss of the arboreal environment where they developed and which provided them with protection and ease of food, which increases life stress. In the same way as animals, plants also had to adapt to these changes, and it is important to note, note that, although some species disappeared, many of the animals and plants that existed in the Miocene remain today. And it is in this context of approximately 10 million years ago, when a strange mammal that we will call the common ancestor, and that lived in the trees, began to descend to the ground in a simple way and by short trips in order to explore a new territory, which over millions of years will be the beginning of a gradual evolution. Our history begins between 7 million and 6 million years ago with the pre-Australopithecus which are the first hominids of our family tree as a species. Approximate height, 150 centimeters. Approximate weight, 70 kilograms. Era, Miocene. Possible habitat, swampy areas. Sites, Chad, Africa. Year of discovery, 2001. Hello, let me introduce myself. I am Sahelanthropus cadensis, a name derived from Sahel, which is the region where I was discovered, and from Anthropos, which in Greek means man. My name is Tumai, or at least that's how I was baptized by my discoverers. Tumai in the Kanuri language of the Sahel, where I was discovered, means hope for life, because that is the name given to children born in the dry season. I am approximately 6 to 7 million years old. For more information I will tell you that I belong to the period called Messinian or Messinian, this refers to the last age of the Miocene epoch that covers a period between 7,246,000 years and 5,332 billion years. My cranial volume is approximately 300 cubic centimeters, very similar to that of today's chimpanzees, and my height was 1 meter and 20 centimeters, with an approximate weight of 70 kilograms. I am an extinct hominid species. I have no relationship with other earlier hominids, but nevertheless I am very close to hominids. My fossil remains were found in the Jurab Desert along with nine cranial and postcranial remains belonging to six members of my species. As a consequence of the position of my skull in relation to my body, I could have a bipedal position for short periods of time, because my occipital orifice, 
which is the place where my vertebral column is inserted in the lower part of my skull, indicates that I was possibly bipedal. The geographical features of the area where I lived 7 million years ago, in the Miocene, were not the same as now. I lived near the Mega Chad Paleo Lake, where there was a forest, a river, and a wooded savanna. In the fauna around me, thousands of vertebrate fossils have been found, such as elephants, giraffes, antelopes, hippopotamuses, crocodiles, lizards, monkeys, fish and wild boars. I fed on fruits, seeds and roots and supplemented my diet with small animals, because according to the morphology of my teeth, I could not eat very hard food because my teeth were small. In the places where my bones were found, no objects or tools associated with my existence were found, which means that there is no evidence of cultural properties, although it is possible that I used very simple tools similar to those used by modern chimpanzees, such as stones or unmodified wooden sticks and other plant materials. But the fact that I had a bipedal condition indicates that I could walk with my arms and hands free to use them as an aiding tool. There is no evidence of cultural attributes, but my species could have used simple tools, similar to those used by modern chimpanzees, including stones or unmodified sticks and other plant materials of very simple manipulation. Approximate height, 140 centimeters. Approximate weight, 50 kilograms. Era, Mycenaean, late Miocene. Possible habitat, dry evergreen forest. Sites, Sheboit, Capsimin, Capturberek, Aragai, Kenya, Africa. Year of Discovery, 2001. Hello, let me introduce myself. I am Orin Tujanensis, also called Millennium Man, because I was found in the year 2000. The name Orin means original man in the Tugan language, and Tujanensis, because my fossils were found in the Tugan Hills in Kenya. I am approximately 6.1 million to 5.8 million years old, which corresponds to the Miocene period, more specifically the Mycenaean of the late Miocene. My species became extinct. In the place where I was found there were found a total of 14 pieces belonging to a group of six individuals, it is not known if they were males or females. What is known is that one of them could be a very small child, because of the size of his teeth. Also in one of the femur fragments found there are two marks that could correspond to those produced by the canines of a large predator. This supposes that one of my group mates could have been hunted and devoured by a big cat. My discoverers believe that I belong to the human family tree and claim that I am different from the genus Australopithecus. Therefore, I am considered a direct ancestor of the Australopithecines and therefore of humans. I am approximately 1 meter and 40 centimeters tall. The size of my brain is unknown since there is no material in the skull to measure the cranial capacity, but it is estimated that it was between 320 and 380 cubic centimeters. The cavity in which the medulla and the encephalon join is oval and not rounded as in apes, for this reason it is assumed that I was bipedal. Likewise, the length and shape of the humerus and femur and the articulation with the pelvis are evidence that I was bipedal, although I retained the ability to climb trees. My dentition is small with small canines and rather large molars, very similar to that of humans, indicating that I had an omnivorous diet rich in protein. My diet was based on fruits and probably ants and other insects. I lived in an open forest with many trees. There is no evidence of specific cultural attributes. However, I may have used simple tools similar to those used by modern chimpanzees such as branches, sticks and other easily manipulated plant materials, as well as unmodified stones. Hello, I am the Artipithecus cadaver, and my name has its origin in the language Afrar, which is the local language of the place where I was found, so that arti means soil, and that combined with the word of Greek origin Pithecus meaning ape and cadaver meaning oldest ancestor, together, make up my full name. I am approximately 5.8 million to 5.2 million years old, which corresponds to the Miocene period, more specifically to the Mycenaean of the late Miocene. My species became extinct. Between 1997 and 2000, in present-day Ethiopia, samples belonging to five members of my species were found, including teeth, jaws, hands, toes, arms, clavicles, teeth and jaws. Later in the year 2002 in the area of Asa Koma, in middle awash six teeth, 
were found which due to their particular characteristics led the researchers to suggest that I belong to a new species of my own, and not to a subspecies of Artipithecus ramidus as at first thought. Therefore, I am a link in the transition from chimpanzees to Artipithecus ramidus, the later species of Australopithecus, and the first species of the genus Homo. My brain is approximately the same as that of today's chimpanzees. Chimpanzees have a cranial capacity of 320 to 480 cubic centimeters. In terms of my shape and size according to my fossil remains, I am also similar to modern chimpanzees, which in an upright position adults are between 1 meter and 1 meter 70 in height. Males in the wild weigh between 34 and 70 kilograms, while females weigh between 26 and 50 kilograms. The bone structure of my toes indicates that I may have been bipedal. My molars are larger than those of chimpanzees, however, my lower canines and upper premolars are similar to those of hominids. My large posterior molars and narrower incisors suggest that other fiber-containing foods such as nuts were present in my diet in addition to fruits and leaves. I lived in a place where there were forests and grasslands with lakes, swamps and springs. There is no evidence of specific cultural attributes. However, I may have used simple tools similar to those used by modern chimpanzees such as branches, sticks and other easily manipulated plant materials as well as unmodified stones. Hello, I am the Artipithecus ramidus. Arti means soil and pithecus in Greek means ape and Ramid which is root in the Amharic language of the place in Ethiopia where I was found. But I prefer to be called Arti. I have an age of 4.4 million years, which corresponds to the Pliocene period, which begins 5.33 million years ago, and ends 2.59 million years ago, more precisely to the Zanklians period. During that period the average global temperature was possibly about 3 degrees Celsius higher than today. This was a time of significant changes in terms of biodiversity, both botanical and zoological, as plants and animals began to settle in different regions, limited by climatic conditions. Also during this period very significant changes took place in the distribution of water masses, an example of this is found in the Mediterranean Sea Basin that was filled again with water coming from the Atlantic Ocean, thus ending the so-called Mycenaean Saline Crisis. In the tree of evolution I am placed in the family Hominidae, in the subfamily of the Hominini, in the same place as the Sahelanthropus the Tugenensis, however, my closest ancestor is the Artipithecus cadaba. It is speculated that my species is a direct ancestor of Australopithecus. This hypothesis places me as the last common relative between humans and chimpanzees. My species became extinct. Due to the location of the fossils, researchers think that I lived in the Wash Valley area in Ethiopia, but fossils have also been found in Kenya, which could belong to other members of my species. In the years 1992 to 1993 some maxillae were found, later in 2005 the discovery of the remains of at least nine individuals in Isduma in northern Ethiopia was reported. Later in 2009 new fossil remains were found in the Afar Valley, where a total of 235 remains of at least 36 individuals of my congeners were found. After the discovery of my almost complete skeleton, many doubts about my species have been resolved, thus, the shape of the upper part of the pelvis indicates that I was bipedal, and that I walked with a straight back, but the fact that the big toe, also called opposable toe of my hands and feet was deviated inwards, shows that I must have walked leaning on the outside of my feet and therefore I could not travel long distances. Another fact in this regard is that the arch of my foot is not pronounced, which also indicates that it would have been difficult for me to walk upright for long distances. To all this, we must add that my cranial position indicates a certain degree of bipedalism, since the base of my skull, which is of small size, is located just above the spine, also my pelvis, my femur, and my tibia indicate bipedalism. The proportion of my physical constitution is largely different from that of a chimpanzee or a modern human, which implies that these differences originated after a separation between the two species.
My brain size was approximately 350 cubic centimeters similar to that of a chimpanzee. My height is about 1.20 meters, and I weighed about 50 kilograms. As far as my dentition is concerned, I have similarities with modern apes, but also some characteristics of my own that reveal a relationship with humans. The size of my molars was relatively large compared to my other teeth. The thickness of my enamel was less than that of Australopithecus, but greater than that of a chimpanzee. My premolars were arranged in a manner similar to those of the human. These, among other characteristics indicate that I fed mainly on vegetables, although I could also eat vertebrates and small insects, therefore, I had a more omnivorous diet than a chimpanzee. It is possible that I also fed on fruits, nuts, eggs and small mammals. When I lived four million years ago, Aramis was a lush jungle crossed by rivers and watercourses, very similar to a very humid forest without being rainy. The fauna was composed of animals such as elephants, antelopes, giraffes, saber-toothed, some types of monkeys, and several species of birds. There is no evidence of specific cultural attributes. However, they may have used simple tools similar to those used by modern chimpanzees such as branches, sticks and other easily manipulated plant materials, as well as unmodified stones.